I'm going to start off the configuration of our Huawei lab. I have a router and a switch connected. You've got your router on the top and your switch on the bottom. And the first thing that we're going to do, we're just going to press enter to see how we access the actual system. The first thing that we see here is that the Huawei logo comes up and also on the switch. And if we do a display version we see output of the VRP that they use so with Huawei what they use is the versatile routing platform which is called their VRP and they use that on both routers and switches so we're using the VRP here and also VRP here. The, th the thing that I would probably check first if I was logging on, I would do like a display clock, see what time it is. And we see that they're using China standard time. That is what they use. We see that it's Friday, the 25th of December. And the clock is displaying at 1040. And the time zone is China standard time. I would probably change that first of all and the way that I would change that the first thing that I would do run a clock time zone now I'm in the UK so our time zone is GMT and I don't want to be messing around with UTC conversions so I'll just say minus zero and I'll also set the right time now we see that it's 2.40 in the morning clock date time put the time first which is 0240 and we'll say 50 seconds and the date today is 2015 12 month fifth day and if we say now display clock we see that the time is shown the day and now it's using GMT. We're going to do the same on the other side. Up, time zone, GMT minus zero, and clock, date, date time, 0241, and say 55 seconds. month and the 25th day okay if I run a display clock we see that the time is now correct and what I will do if I run a directory here we can see that um, there's no files that are saved so if I say save I'm going to save it as config.cfg saving it to the flash you see the config is saved there I'll say directory up here save config.cfg this is saving it just basically um, on the flash drive as a specific config which is called config.cfg if I run a directory here we see config.cfg if I wanted to see that what is written under that config in plain text I would write more config.cfg and it will show me the configuration that I've got here so this is just the default configuration now if I'd actually named that and then I was thinking oh no I wanted to name that something else I could actually rename that configuration so I could say rename config.cfg and let's call it master config dot cfg say yes now when I look in the directory it's master config so let's do the same on the other side rename config dot cfg to 
master config.cfg. And it's the master config. Also, if you had something in there that you wanted to delete, maybe we will save a spurious one. So if I say save config.cfg, we see that both of them are here and I find that this is a duplicate of this. So I just want to delete config.cfg. I will just use the delete command delete you can say flash and then config.cfg i'm going to delete it from the flash yes when i type in the directory now that one has been deleted these are just a couple of ways to navigate around the where the files are actually getting saved on the flash the next part that what, what I want to bring you into is having a look at actually configuring the system. So with Hoari, if we want to go from user view to, it's called system view, we actually type system view, and this takes us to the configuration part. The first thing that I would probably always configure is the host name. So if I say the system name of R1 over here, and what even though I know this is a switch, I'm going to call this R2. So I will say system name R2. Now the reason why I was connecting to a switch is there's a certain command that I want to show you a bit later on to just kick a user off of a terminal session. I didn't find this command on the routers but I did find it on the switches. This is the only reason I'm using a layer 3 switch as opposed to two routers. I'm going to say a display IP interface brief and we see the interfaces. This is the one that's connected over to the switch. We're going to configure that now. So we say interface G0001. We give it an IP address, which we've used, which is 10.1.12.1 to slash 24. You can, set, you can say undo shutdown, so that is usually undone. Now the, the commands to go back and forward, if you want to go all the way back to user view, you'd say return. That will take you all the way back to user view. And if you were under the interface, say here, and you just wanted to go back one level, you will say quit. We're going to do the same on switch or router two, which is really the switch. So we say interface G001, IP address 10.1.12.2 on a slash 24. Right, okay, so it's not allowing the IP address, so it'll probably be under the VLAN interface. Display IP interface brief. Yeah, so I need to say interface VLAN interface one. Say IP address 10.1.12.2 slash 24. And let's ping the other side, ping 10.1.12.1, and we're pinging. What we're looking to do now is probably add some individual users. Individual users can be configured to access certain features just by defining the login name and the password for the user. And this, this access control is how you're gonna control who actually gets into your network, what services they could use, um, when they get in and so what, what we're going to do we're going to create a couple of users the first one will be called student one and I'll also create an admin user now the admin user is there by default but I'm not sure what the default password is so if we do a triple a and if you want to look under this section we just say display this and it shows us what's under this section so I've got a default user of admin but there's a default password which I'm not sure what that is so I will change that so I'll say local user local user admin and the password is going to be encrypted so cipher admin we also see that the service type is only HTTP let me say local user admin service type now to be able to get in 
to the terminal, you need to have a service type of terminal. And we're gonna have a service type of SSH and also a service type of Talnet for the admin user. And we're gonna replicate that for student one. So let's say local user student one password cipher we use Huawei. We're gonna have student one privilege level only of 10. And we're gonna also make the student one service type only as having terminal and um, Talnet. So if we say display this, and these are the commands that I've just, I'll also make sure that the admin has a privilege level of 15, which is the top privilege level. This is our backup. If there's any issues later on, we should be able to get in with the admin account. Privilege, what is that? Privilege level, privilege level 15. Excellent, let's save that. David Master config .cfg. Yes, I'm sure I want to save it. And if we quit now, oh, I didn't set it up. So these accounts haven't taken view because we have to haven't taken any effect because we haven't applied them any under any interface. So the inf interface I'm initially going to apply it under is the user interface of the console. On Cisco, you would use line. On Huawei, we'll use the user interface. We'll say console zero. We use the authentication mode as AAA. from here let me just see if I can log in again I will log in as admin and I'm back in as admin excellent quit again and let's see if it works for the student so student one password of Huawei and it lets us in